And holy moly, guys, that is insane. Apple's M2 iPad Pro is finally here after a long year and a half of waiting, and there is a lot of disappointment because Apple seemingly changed barely anything, including the upgrade to the M2 chip. So in this video, I'm gonna go in depth to explain and show off every little difference with the new M2 iPad Pro because there are a lot of people wondering if they should just buy an M1 iPad Pro for as low as $630 right now instead of paying the full $800 price for the new M2 iPad Pro. Now, as far as design, there's literally only one difference, which is quite funny. It's the fact that you now get the iPad Pro text on the back of the M2 iPad Pro compared to the previous one that just said iPad. So there you go, it now says iPad Pro. And now moving over to the front, everything is essentially identical. And the one thing that really bugs people about the new M2 iPad Pro is that it didn't get the landscape camera like we got in the iPad 10, which we think is a really big deal and a nice difference when you're using the webcam or FaceTime. So it's really disappointing that Apple did not add that. And it's likely because of the Apple Pencil 2 magnetic connector and charger right here, which basically has a lot of hardware on the inside, which would have been in the same spot that the camera would have been in. Now, one thing that is new is the new hover feature for the Apple Pencil, which you don't have for the M1 iPad Pro, but check this out, let's test it. Bam, you can see that it is hovering when you get close, which is actually Pretty cool, but I don't think this is a hardware difference because nothing changed in terms of the display or hardware that would enable this to happen. I'm pretty sure they could have given it to the M1, but they probably chose not to. This is definitely cool though. I'm sure it could help some artists out there to be able to see the color and size of your drawing. So as far as differences that you could actually see and feel and use, that's basically it. Everything else is gonna be on the inside in terms of the different performance aspects. But luckily, there is something new, and that is the new snap case and float folio from our sponsor, Moft. So all you do is snap it on like this, and it even has a pass-through for the smart connector. And on the front, you can see it has this nice little pocket to protect the Apple Pencil so it doesn't get lost as easily. And because of the design, it doesn't interfere with any kind of keyboard cases. And that includes Moff's new float folio, which magnetically connects over the snap case and it covers up the front and the back. So now basically everything on the iPad Pro is protected, the sides, the corners, the Apple Pencil, everything, but that is not the main point of the float folio because you can adjust it for four different angles for your creativity using the origami hybrid design. And this one is meant to give you 1.6 inches of floating with the iPad. And then we have the final one, which is the coolest. You just pull it back like this and bam, you get over three inches of floating for a nice media consumption setup. So be sure to check out the snap case and float folio using the links in the description and pinned comment below. And now getting back into the iPad Pro comparison, nothing else has changed guys. We have the same exact displays. We don't have mini LED like some leaks were showing us. So the only thing left to test out is the performance. So let's jump right into that, starting with a storage speed test to see if we actually got an improvement in storage. So let's run Jazz Disk Bench right here. And look at that. We seem to have the same score around 1600 read megabytes per second and around 875 to 900 for the write. No difference in storage. So with that said, let's jump into the actual M2 chip performance, starting out with Geekbench 5. And I do want to mention that they both have the same 8 gigs of RAM. And even though the M2 chip within the MacBooks can go up to 25 four gigs of RAM, you actually don't have the option in the M2 iPad Pro. It maxes out at 16 if you buy a one terabyte of storage model or larger. But now getting into the actual CPU test, we can see that the clock speed of the performance cores is now up to 3.49 gigahertz compared to 3.19 on the M1, and that should lead to faster single core performance. Let's see. And there you go, we have our scores. It looks like we have 10% faster single core, which is actually pretty decent for a year over year difference and 16% multi-core performance gain 
that's also pretty good. And honestly, that kind of surprises me because it's packing that much performance, like laptop levels of performance, in a super thin iPad Pro. I mean, Apple never stops amazing you. The only issue with it though is the M1 iPad Pro was already quite overkill compared to the actual apps that you can download because you don't have those same heavy hitter apps like you have on Mac OS that really take advantage of all the performance on the iPad and that's its biggest downfall. But of course we do wanna see all of the differences so I have Speedometer 2.0 which is a web browsing benchmark and this is basically gonna give you the actual snappiness of browsing the web so let's see if that improves. And wow, I was actually not expecting this big of a difference Difference. Look at that 26% higher score in speedometer. So you actually are going to feel a snappiness difference with the M2 chip. That's actually way better than I expected. So that's a pretty decent improvement. Now let's go back to Geekbench 5 and run the metal graphics test. And holy moly, guys, that is insane. 33,300 on the M2 iPad Pro compared to 20,699. 61% faster graphics performance. That is absolutely unbelievable. I can't believe you're getting this much performance in an iPad Pro. And no, this is not throttled compared to the MacBooks. So with that said, I actually wanna do a longer term stress test. This is basically a gaming performance test, GFX Bench Metal, and I'm only doing the 1440p Aztec Ruins high tier off screen test because that's what I ran on the M2 MacBooks. And that'll give us a better idea if it is actually throttled down compared to those. And would you look at that when it actually comes to real world gaming performance or graphics performance, there is now only a 21% boost to the actual graphics performance compared to that huge 61 we saw in Geekbench Metal. So when it comes down to real tasks, it's not that big of a difference. And now one thing that I do wanna emphasize is that I recently did a gaming comparison with the M1 iPad Pro versus Samsung's flagship. And in that test, and basically every game I tested, the M1 was already almost at perfect 120 FPS average. So in that case, it was already reaching its limit the limits of the actual 120 Hertz display itself. So with that said, in terms of gaming, there's no real point to go to the M1 iPad Pro because even the best game like Genshin Impact was already right there close to 120. But you know what? Just for good measure, let's also run 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme unlimited test to see if there's any differences with a different gaming benchmark. Now while this is running, I do want to mention that it's a pretty heavy hitting graphics test and I have not noticed any display dimming or overheating whatsoever on this model. So I don't think there's going to be a difference in terms of that. And there we go. We have our scores and this time the results are a little bit better. It's now 35% faster. So 40.5 FPS compared to 30.1. So it is doing a little bit better in this test. And honestly, this is actually impressive. And I think the benefit here, if you were to choose the M2 iPad Pro, is if we do get even better and more graphically demanding games coming soon, which unfortunately, I don't think we are compared to Genshin Impact, which is the downside. But hey, at least you have the bragging rights of more performance for now. And now one thing that Apple did upgrade on the M2 iPad Pro is the wireless connectivity, including Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3, which is gonna be more efficient, maybe use less power, increase the range. So that's a nice boost, as long as you also have a Bluetooth 5.3 device that it connects to, like the new AirPods Pro 2 or the new iPhone 14 models. Now, as far as Wi-Fi 6E, we unfortunately don't have a Wi-Fi 6E router in this office, so it's not really gonna help us, as well as everybody else that doesn't specifically have a Wi-Fi 6E router, and 
And our internet is kind of slow here because we have Comcast business internet, which is slower. But just in case, let's see if they maybe boosted the antennas to give faster performance. And wow, would you look at that. Somehow the new iPad Pro actually got worse Instead of 85 download, we got 65 for some reason. And instead of 16.3 upload, we have 13.6. That might be just a negligible difference or room for error, I'm not sure, but it's definitely not better. So now let's move on to video editing because yes, the new M2 iPad Pro does support ProRes encoding and decoding. So let's see what kind of real world difference that actually makes. I have a five minute 4K ProRes video right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and export it just like that. And now while this is running, I do want to mention that iMovie just came out with an update and both of them are updated right now. So everything should be running nicely, but so far it's not that far ahead. So we have our scores and the new M2 iPad Pro took two minutes and 55 seconds to export it, while the M1 took three minutes and 25. So it is faster, but definitely not worth the extra cost. So now with all of that testing done and finished, let me give you guys my thoughts on whether you should be buying the M2 or the old M1. Well, to be honest, because the M1 was already so powerful and in many ways overkill, I don't think it's worth it. Yes, it has a new float magic pencil feature. It has Wi-Fi 6E and it is faster, but honestly guys, I would just go for the M1 iPad Pro that you can get for as low as $630. And that is my final take. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did, definitely click the circle button to subscribe and check out one of those two videos right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.